Why, why, why don't why don't we get something more specific? I talked about geology, right? And how could it fathom? How could anyone illiterate, who well, the science was counter to that time, right? How could this you? Is, this see is something counter to say to say that bone, bone, that the mountains, mountains have roots yeah. is is. And they have a function that we understand that is, is in line with isostasy according to geology today. That to me is quite phenomenal. Yeah. But once again, you kind of you've equated these really crude, primitive guesses that you find in the Quran with the specific details of science. Okay, let me You're tell you why they're not crude. The reason I'm crude is that the Quranic science, and this is be good for everyone to listen, is that we have a, the, the, the Quran is one, uh, probably the only religious book that tells you, gives you the tools to interpret it, right? So what the Quran says is you take general principles in the Quran, general values or general statements, and you refer them to specific ones related to the same topic. So in, 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 in normal literature and linguistics, it's called inter and intertextuality, okay? So when we take general statements, we can make them specific with the Arabic language using the Quran itself. So it's not crude from that perspective. And we have a scope of interpretation. Because if you, the classical Arabic dictionaries were preserved, and we have a scope of meaning. So when we have the scope of meaning, we know that these things are quite specific. Significantly, even when the Quran says that the universe is expanding, for, for example, there's the word here, expanding, which actually means it expanding in the past or expanding in the future. There is a scope of interpretation, do you see? So the interesting thing is, we should maybe... No, it's not interesting. It's up. It's, uh, you're, real, you're really boring. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the same... This, that's, that's a, is, that, is that an atheist cop-out, maybe? No, no. This is, this is the same story we get from Jewish scholars, from Christian scholars. They do exactly the same thing. Well, I'm not Jewish or Christian. I'm and Muslim. It's, and we're talking about specific standard, issues. It's standard religious analysis. Yeah, but Professor Myers, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think it would be highly arrogant of me if I said to you, what you're saying is typical atheists, what they say, they change the subject, they go to history and they, t they say that you're the same as the Jews, you're the same as the Christians, and so all these outdated cliches. Would you appreciate me doing that? Go ahead. But I wouldn't. Do you know why? Do you know why I wouldn't do that? Because I really want to engage with you. I, I really want to engage with you, that's why. But no, no, you do not. You, yes, I do. You want to parent dogma at me and have me no, accepted. No, I'm actually accepting a lot of your assumptions and premises. I don't have a problem with that. Well, you did also try to assert and project faith on the hymn. Yes. And well, he, we are he, not he said it was an assumption. That's why. Right. Okay. And you can make an assumption based on evidence. Hey, but he said he had no evidence. based on no evidence. No, well, we've been oh, talking wait, 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 quite no, evidentially. I do have evidence. Here. That's okay, what go. I'm telling you. That when, for instance, when yeah. we look at Aristotle's words, when we look at, at the description of the Quran, we see a correspondence. Well, do you, you haven't evidence. shown us any correspondence. Yeah, that's the point. That's a statement. You haven't shown us. This is a statement. Aristotle is like the Quran. How? How? Aristotle, Aristotle, I'm like Einstein, everyone. Aristotle also describes the emergence of bones and muscle <laughs> right. in sequence. Right. Okay. And it's like the Quran. And it's like the Quran. Which well, does, it, does Aristotle say the bones come first and then the flesh and the muscles? Does he say that? Are you sure? Anybody that works. I'll, 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 I'll let you think about this. Well, anyone who works are you? Are you is is that what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it. Can you, can you tell is that, you sure? is that what the Quran specifically says? Absolutely. This is exactly then, what the Quran says. Chapter, then, then chapter 23. Because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. Yeah, but Professor Myers. Oh, that's, no. that's, what hap that's not what happens in Well, the this is what the embryologists are telling us. Yeah. The this is exactly no, what the not. embryologists are telling us. No, they're not. Um, okay. Embryologists. L let me tell you what Keith Moore said. I mean, you can disagree with him. He doesn't like Keith Moore. Uh, I, I don't know why, why you don't like What he said on the page number 364A of his book, The Human Embryo, that in the seventh week the bones are formed. And immediately after that, <laughs> the flesh is formed, and the flesh, the, the bones are clothed with flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Moore is wrong. He's an embryologist. This is this is his field. It's my field too. Okay. No, he's wrong. You're, you're an embry embryologist. That that yes. Oh great! <laughs> wow, wow, that's news to me. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's wrong because what happens first is you have you have differentiation of mesoderm. Right. That within the mesoderm you have segregation into things like embryonic mesenchyme, and then you have these cartilaginous centers that will form bone. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. Simultaneously. So you, so yes. e even if that's the case, the Quran is right. Because Thumma yeah. is very, 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 even if that's the case, even if that's the case, linguistically the Quran is right. Thumma literally can in Arabic language means is, is things happening simultaneously. Yes. As well. yes, but that's Carol, besides the point. So wait, wait, let me, let me, uh, Professor Myers, I think what's interesting, even if you're right, that means we would have to assume that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and peace upon him, actually used to go and look into biology. He was a biologist. He would actually no. go and investigate no, 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 things about mountains. He was an astronomer. He must have had a library of an Alexandrian magnitude. So even when you make these assumptions, it's still problematic. Even a geologist? Wait, no, this, this, no, because this is what I've been telling you. Sure. There are no embryological details of any consequence in the Quran. 
Well, the, 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 this, is, this is not the, stuff. The, de the details are not there. You're right. You're right. The, this the is details not are not stuff there. that requires a huge library to figure out. This requires a passing acquaintance with general knowledge about the primitive state of biology at the time. That's a fair point. Are you willing to accept now that Muhammad possibly had general knowledge about astronomy, uh, hieroglyph, hieroglyphics? He had knowledge of, um, for example, uh, geology. Yep. He's talking about isostasis, something about isostasis. Okay, so he must have been going around studying with some scholars in Arabia. He must. He was. He wasn't a shepherd. He was a very literate man. The he intellectual. Was, he was time. teaching in a university. <laughs> he was an intellectual. And all those people who believed in at the time, they were must. There must have been blind bunch of bigots, and, and they just followed him just, just for the sake of it, just to have a drink. No, I've been yeah. saying quite the opposite. I'm saying okay. that he's a man of his times, that he was part of a culture, right. that that the Arabs of that time were not quite as primitive and dogmatic and ignorant as, you're, as you seem Well, to I it depends what books you're reading, sir, yeah. because this is my I'm saying, history. I'm saying they have I, I'm a historian from the University of London, and I, I'll refer you to the books of Irfan Shahid, who's an authority in this field, uh, pre-Islamic Arabia, and he states that Arab, Arabs at the time were a primitive society, yes. and now you're saying yes. Well, no, I agree that yeah, they were. Well, that, they, I, were they, they were primitive in the sense they were that's, not, that's exactly what I'm saying. There was no Arabic language you, written down at the time. Now, on the one hand, you are complaining that there, there was this detailed, wonderful science sure, in the sure. Quran yes. that he could only have learned from you know, Revelation. Sure. And I'm saying that no, that what we find in the Quran is an extremely primitive science. There was nothing more than the common man could have learned from you know, general interactions with, with learning society at the time. Like mountain roots as well? How would they even know that? It was not even knowledge at that time. Mountain roots? What do you do again? It's a, it's, all it's saying is that you've got this mountain that's going up here and there's a lot of depth beneath it. And then they would understand the function of that as well. The function, the function, the function, it is, it is, yes, the function of the Quran is, is, is to anchor the crust and things, like, and that's not the case. That's again wrong. It's theology. not to anchor the crust at all. What is it for? It's actually to, from my knowledge, it's actually to, you know, like Archimedes fulcrum point. That is, that's what isostasis comes from. It's like another term to discuss the Archimedes fulcrum point, and that's what an is there for. I think the really sad there. thing here is that you're missing the enormous picture to focus on the pixel. Yes. Right. Okay. The enormous picture is that you have something that only communicates with the least credible possible proponent. And he wants you to believe impossible nonsense for no reason. And only if you believe impossible nonsense for no reason will you be saved. And you will get unimaginable rewards if you believe whatever the priests are selling. And you will suffer a fate worse than death if you don't buy into their nonsense. That's not true. That's quite a sexy way of looking at it, I think. <laughs> yeah, a sexy way to look at yeah. it. I mean, well, There's a language barrier here. <laughs> You're all about the sexy way of looking at it. No, you, 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 you sexed it up slightly, right? Because I, actually, what I've, Professor, right? Yes, yeah, but Professor Myers. Well, just because Professor Myers was like, actually, the Quran is quite opposite to that. It's not a text that says believe just because I say so. Okay, it actually tells you to, for example, Athalat Taqinun in Arabic, it says, do you not use your mind, your intellect? So let me it's clarify. telling you and trying to evoke thinking. You see? I just want to make sure we don't have sure. language barriers. So when I said that you are punished for not believing, you are saying that you're saying that I'm wrong. That in your religion, you are not punished simply for not believing. Uh, it, no, you're right, but it's bigger than that. It's an existential it's bigger question. Than, so I was right. No, okay. well, what else am I wrong about? <laughs> well, if, I think the way we connect with each other is not by just having yes or no answers, but having a conversation, right? So are you? It's an existential question. For example, see, hold the, on just a second. I want you to think for a moment about yes. the creator of the entire universe. Yeah. Doesn't give a rat's ass whether you do anything good or bad in your life. All that matters, the sole criteria, is that you are gullible enough. To follow the story of the least credible, illiterate proponent you can follow. That's the sole criteria, and that's all. No, that's not true. Okay, There's if that's things. not it, then, then an unbeliever things. could be saved. An unbeliever would not go to hell. Yeah, that's true. If all unbelievers go to hell, then the sole criteria is gullibility. Let me give an example. Uh, first and foremost, what we say is that the Quran says we do not punish anyone until they have given the message. And there is another concept in the Quran called. Delil Burhan, which means conclusive 
evidence, evidence that you require uh, to be conclusive. Now, right. now the second sure. thing is the second because the message is good for you. That's why. I, I, Have I, you I, seen I, that in I history? Save that so no, yeah. that, that, now I can't. thank you. <laughs> well, maybe no. no, 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 no <laughs> there's another point. Let's not get one second. One second. No, no stampedes. Okay. The other point is is an existential question because we believe in Islam of this. Uh, philosophical principle called the fitra. Fitra means the innate disposition. And we believe that human beings have been created with the innate disposition to acknowledge oneness. Okay? It's okay. a spiritual concept, the oneness of God. And what we say is, when we deny ourselves, that's why the question who you are is an existential question in the Quran. Saying, who are you? Are you just a product of American society? Are you a product of capitalism? Are you a product of communism? Are you a product of the system? Are you a product of your parents? If you are, then who are you? You're just like uh, a social biological robot that someone types in the code and you just act in accordance. And the Quran says, don't do that. Think about your reality. And it says, you know, are you just going to follow your forefathers? And it says, li literally, even if they were based on no knowledge, it's an existential question. And from that we say, if you don't know who you are, then you're just rejecting yourself. And God says in the Quran that to, to, to deny God or to re reject God from that innate disposition perspective is like denying your own self. Okay. So the point I'm trying to say is it is an exi existential question. It's, no. And that's why it's useful to always have this kind of good discussions all the time. Okay. Now, my primary interest is yes. in phylogenetics. So when I go to deny myself, I would have to deny that I am a, an evolved ape. That's what I am. That's what we all are. Okay. The Quran, so far as I know, in denying evolution, denies itself. And you are telling me that what I have to instead adopt... It doesn't deny yes. all principles. The Quran doesn't, yeah. doesn't talk about evolution. Regardless, so, yeah. what you're telling me, it talks about Adam and Eve and all of this, and the great flood that we know didn't happen and all of that. But apart from all that, you're asking me to accept this uber-galactic super-being... Well, the Quran doesn't talk about the great flood either. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just to clarify, the important point is you're asking me to accept this uber galactic super being, of which we have no evidence at all, from a, a system of religion which has so far only produced failure in every predictable sense. And you want me to believe that this thing will punish me simply for not believing and it wants me to believe the least credible people and the most improbable stories. And I'll be punished if I don't. How is that not a criteria of gullibility? Well, there's two assumptions here. First of all, I said there's this galactic being that doesn't exist. I, I, would, I would deny that. I, I think there's very good reasons to believe that a divine exists. I could articulate them. I would, yeah, I would love can, to you see can you. read this book. <laughs> it's, it's bullshit. All the way uh, Professor, yeah. how, how Professor Myers, you know? because, because we really want to listen to Miriam Namazi because she has outdated creatures about the Sharia, right? <laughs> Especially when she talks about rape using four witnesses. That's nowhere in the Sharia. That's not at all. Well, the, 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 the enough. Booklet, I just read a booklet. It's just a joke. It's, it's but anyway, we we'll listen to that. The thing is, if we pay for your ticket to come down to London, would you have an intellectual dialogue with us with a non-Muslim uh, coordinator? An intellectual dialogue with you about what? Well, what we'll be just doing so far. Yeah. I'll be around. You might I'll be tell around. you what, yeah. I'll give you a forum. Cool. Okay. <laughs> we'll book you on the Magic Sandwich Show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, 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 what is that? <laughs> magic Sandwich Show. Yeah. We'll what do you, you think on the Magic that? Sandwich? Is that a real show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a real show. Can I get a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> get and if you magic do, it'll cure you of cancer. <laughs> oh, oh, only, if, only if it's halal meat, right? <laughs> Certainly. Well, hey, good to see you, Professor. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> the show goes on. <laughs>